Hello everybody, it's Khalif PvP bringing you another Wildstar video. This time we're giving a Heal Slinger build. Yes, for my level 50 Spell Slinger that I had quite some time at 50, I decided to turn him to a healer. And this is the heal build that I've been running around in BGs with. So let's get it started and talk about the amps. Luckily for a heal slinger, at least the build that I've been playing around with is really shallow in terms of amp support, so you can pretty much go right down the support line. So right up, we're gonna go get focus recovery all the way up to three. We're gonna get support power all the way up to three, as well as focus cost. This really, really helps us uh, mitigate our focus uh, dependency. Otherwise, at least before you get ruined out. A lot of times I saw that I was kind of uh, getting focused star, but so by getting these three, I ensure that you know I'm I'm on top of my focus game. For the tier four set, I pick up clarity again to kind of mitigate the focus uh, dependency. Uh, clarity it gives a ten percent chance to gain efficiency, reducing focus cost by twenty percent for four seconds. Uh, and then we pick up Holy Roller using a support ability grants one stack of Empower. Uh, in increases support power by 1% for 10 seconds and stacks 7 times. You can pretty much get this to stack all 7 times. Uh, so essentially you are getting a 7% boost in support power at any given moment. From the hybrid AS, obviously we're going to go right up the critical hit and we'll talk about why we want to get that. Uh, and then we're going to put any... I had 52, we can actually go up to 57. Uh, if you do, the build is gonna change slightly differently. I'll post the full 57 build in the comments below. But since I only have 52, I pick up two from Critical Severity. I would pick up the third one as well if I have the amp points. Uh, from the Hybrid SU, this is actually, the more, I think, the most important uh, branch of your of your amps you're gonna pick up maximum shield capacity again just so you can have that extra buffer uh, from your shields especially because we pick up the 80 percent uh, mitigation shield as well and then we're gonna do two things we're gonna pick up fury uh, when an absorb you apply uh, apply to an ally is removed uh, you grant an empower that increases their assault support and support power by five percent and we'll talk about this uh, this amp uh, in a little bit and the next one we're going to do is enhance shields when absorb shield is applied is removed. You grant a defense. Uh, shield mitigation increased to 100%. You could switch this out with uh, flame armor or uh, frost armor depending on what you want. Uh, if you see a lot of, you know, a lot of your fights, everybody is low on shield mit. What you can do again is, I, I like flame armor because it helps you uh, get those 20 kill uh, contracts. Uh, and the next one is you can get Frost Armor again, uh, which reduces the movement by 30%. The only downside for this one is it can only occur 10 seconds per foe. But again, if you have a lot of sp support that is being, uh, at least you see, being kind of uh, uh, attacked a lot, you might want to pick this up so it gives them a chance to run away. And finally, the big, big thing from this is Hyper Shield. Landing a direct critical heal grants a... Pretty much a 1400 absorb you can actually once you have everything goes up to about 1600 so you can get a 1600 absorb so this is where i was talking about where the crit uh critical hit is coming in you, every time you critical hit you're gonna put this hyper shield and then you know these bubbles where every time your bubble gets bursted your your shield absorb um you are giving them an assault and support power upgrade i mean 1400 is really really small shield so that means any given moment you're putting fury on your target because more than likely it's going to get destroyed in one or two hits so 100 percent pretty much 100 percent of the time you're going to have fury up the rest we go pick up right down the cooldowns tree to pick up any other cooldown mitigations and again this is for our support abilities we'll talk about later uh we pick up readiness um when combat and spell surge is inactive restore additional three spell power so again we want to make sure our spell surge is up as fast as we can uh we also pick up focus stone when using gather focus you get this little stone that you can cast which gives you extra um, focus, health, and spell power. And the, again, the reason I did this is if it's a prolonged fight, uh, what I've seen is you know you can kind of get focus starved. So I want to use this to make sure that you know I'm not that focus starved. And then finally, Void Pact. Uh, it's a great ability. 
that increases your assault and support power for a short duration. So now let's talk about the runes. For the runes, we go with Resurgence as our primary rune set. And the reason we want to get Resurgence is, Resurgence is pretty much your crit and focus based one. And from our amps, we know that every time we crit, we get our bubbles. So for that particular reason, whenever possible, go with crit based runes. We supplement Resurgence with Havoc as well as Sinoshore. Havoc is our crit and multi-hit runes and Sinoshore is our multi-hit and focus pool runes. The reason you want to go with multi-hit and you might be wondering why multi-hit is kind of more of a medic thing. The reason you want to go with multi-hit we supplement our healing with uh, fusion rune exuberance which uh, adds Anytime you multi-hit on a target, it heals them for additional, I think it's about a 300, this tooltips bug, but it's about, I think, 300 or 400 health, as well as 20 other targets around him as well. Our primary heal, runic healing, is only a sing actually a two-target heal, so for that reason, we supplement it with um, kind of AoE heals as much as we can. The next fusion rune that we pick up is another multi-hit based one, Soothing Light. Uh, whenever you land a direct multi-hit on an ally, place a pool of light at their location. And what this pool does is increases healing by 5%, so healing the incoming healing, as well as it restores health for uh, 5 seconds. Um, and it's kind of like an AoE little mini pool of void spring that you put on the target. It's really great for BG such as... Uh, Halls of Bloodsworn because you're you're usually on a target on a on a, a point which allows you to put down multiple of these wells and heal ton of targets. For our feet, this is where we go with Clean Coat. Clean Coat is our class based uh, rune set, and this is where our big our, our build pretty much gets uh, completed. Uh, clean Coat is anytime you put an absorb on a tar on a target, it dispels one debuff. And at 8, whenever absorb that you apply is removed, uh, you, all, you heal, and it's again tooltips bug, you heal for about 500 every half a second for 3 seconds. So remember what we were talking about when we were talking about amps. Our, our bubble is quite short, it's only about uh, 1.5k, 1.6k bubble. So this, this thing's going to get destroyed pretty quickly. Uh, and that means every time it gets destroyed, we're healing our target for about 500 or for about 1,000 every second. So this is huge. And that's one of the main reasons we want to go as much of crit critical hit as we can. For our headpiece, again, resurgence whenever possible. Uh, for the fusion room, we pick up harmony when your direct heals crit or multi-hit. You have a 30% chance to restore zero focus. Can only occur once every five seconds. Again, crit and multi-hit, you see where this is paying off. For our chest piece fusion, we're going to pick up Virtuous Circle when we cast a basic heal. This is a big one, actually. When you cast a basic heal, your multi-hit rating goes up by uh, for five seconds. We can actually stack this up where you're getting about a... Uh, I want to say about a 700 or so multi-hit rating, enough to put you above the 30% limit. For the pants, we don't really have any fusion runes, so we just pick up Resurgence and Havoc. So now let's talk about our skills for this build, uh, I think. For that's the most important part. Uh, for the basic heal, we're going to pick up Runic Healing at T8. And the reason we do that, as we mentioned previously, you know, we want to get those crits as out as much as we can to get those bubbles, to get those heals. And Runic Healing, in my opinion, is a really, really cheap and underrated skill. And the reason I say it's really cheap is, for example, let's take a look and let's try to do some skills that you would spend um, focus. You can see this focus bar down here. And this is not going down. In fact, it's actually going up. Um, it goes up to 91, 92, and it just kind of goes down. And it fluctuates. And realistically, if I was to sit here and cast Runic Healing, you can see this bar actually go up. It started out at 90, and now it's at 97. Now it's at 98. So I can realistically, if I'm doing a BG, just run around in circles with Runic Healing and nothing else and still be doing healing. So it kind of gives me that versatility and kind of separates me from that focus need. 
Next up, we're gonna pick up Runes of Protection at tier 4, which grants us the interrupt armor for 3 seconds. And the reason we pick up Runes of Protection is because our, you know, our main heal is such a low health, uh, low health uh, heal, we want to pick up runic, pr Runes of Protection because if somebody's getting focused down, popping this uh, gives us a little bit of a buffer to get their health back up. Um, especially if it's spell surged, it does about a 1200 absorb. So it gives us a quite a big buffer uh, to get our target's health back up. As well as, again, it's a absorb, so we're going to be doing those absorb healing as well. Uh, from that, we pick up Regenerative Pulse at Tier 4. Uh, at Tier 4, we get uh, cooldown is only triggered if the pulse is cast within 5 seconds. So this allows us to have two Regenerative Pulse fire off uh, very close to each other. Uh, it is about a 15k or so heal. Um, at Spell Surge, it heals for about uh, 7k, 7.8k. Uh, 7.8, yeah, 7.8k. And since you can shoot off two of them, uh, we can pretty much, you know, heal for about 15k or so. So those are the only heals that we have on our bar. Uh, from the Utility Tree, we're gonna pick up Void Pact, which increases our Assault and Support, again, from the amp that we have. Um, we get that up to uh, tier 4 because it reduces our assault on support abilities by 50% as well as reduce the cooldown and that's the primary reason we pick it up really uh, to reduce the cooldown of um, Void Pack. This allows us to keep Void Pack up pretty much instantaneous um, for a very minimum downtime. It, it lasts for 8 seconds and the cooldown is about 12 seconds. Uh, so we're only down by about 4 second downtime. Now uh, from the utility tree we're going to pick up um, Void Slip. I, I don't really need to go into why you need to pick this up. Um, we pick up Gather Focus. Again at a rare time where you're low on focus, use this one to get your focus back. As well as Gate. Again, uh, don't really need to you know, come up with a reason to pick this one up. Uh, it's just mobility skills. So one of the alternatives you can do is give up Ignite and and as well as Regenerative Pulse and pick up Healing Sal and Healing Torrent. Healing Sal at Tier 4, Healing Torrent at Tier 8. And what happens is for Healing Torrent at Tier 8, if you heal somebody that has Healing Sal, you put a 3.5k absorb on, on those target. Now healing Torrent also heals... Uh, yourself and four more in, injured, injured allies, so you're healing five people total. So you're gonna increase your, you know, healing, uh, healing amount uh, by for the end of the game. But I particularly don't like it because you know at tier eight, tier four healing torrent you can cast surged healing torrent and in um, the normal one independently and you pretty much need to cast it independently if you're using healing torrent uh, because a 10k heal is not big enough to um, you know to big enough to pick up a spike target so for that reason I mean the focus cost alone is quite high it's about 200 if you want to cast both of them it's so in my my playthroughs, when I played it with this build, I've found a lot of times I'm almost focus starved, uh, and I was dangerously focus starved. And the reason I like just running runic healing is I can just you know, as I mentioned, use this skill at pretty much indefinitely, and I can be just be running around in circles, making sure everybody is topped off with. Uh, with absorb shields as well as the the healing that they get after the absorb shield breaks. The other thing with the healing torrent build is it's great if you're a solo healer because again healing torrent has much higher uh, healing potential than any of your other skills in in your build. Uh, but very very f often I'm running with um, you know another healer. I'm running with a medic healer or an esper healer. So I really didn't need that, you know, massive spike healing. If I had an Esper, they had they had their finishers that would, you know, do a massive healing. So I really didn't need healing torn. That's you know, one of the big reasons I I personally ran with healing.
So folks, that pretty much wraps up our build video. Hopefully you guys liked it and hopefully you guys have good outcome playing it. Let me know of your suggestions. Obviously there's a ton of suggestions, ton of improvements that I can make. So please do let me know in the comment section. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Khalif PvP.